As you all know, Garmin make cracking bike computers and they've just released two new ones. This is the new 540, this is the new 840, both look very similar. We're gonna have a quick summary on what's new, what's different, what's changed, what's good, what's bad, and if one of them is the right one for you. So like I said, these two look very similar, but the main difference between the two of them is the fact that the 540 has a button focus and the 840 has a touch screen as well, as well as the buttons. So on the 840, you can do both. It's got the same buttons as the 540, but also with a lovely touch screen too. As well as the touchscreen functionality in the 840, you have a few extra navigation functions, which are really handy. And these basically allow you to make courses or routes within the unit itself without having to use anything else. It's really easy to set one up. You click on navigation, you can click on course creator, a round trip course, which is what I'll do now. You can set the distance that you want. It's gonna start from the location where you are, so it does that automatically for you. And it's gonna use all of Garmin's really in-depth GPS data that they have from everyone using these units. So it's gonna know the best routes to ride even if you've never been to that area, you're gonna get a really good course. And it's as simple as that, really. You can hit search, it calculates a few routes for you. You can choose the one you wanna do. And it's as simple as that. That's how easy riding is these days. You don't even have to look at the route that you're gonna be doing and know that you're gonna be doing a good one, which is pretty sweet. Also zero effort as well, fanning around with extra technology on your phone, on your computer. You just know you're gonna get something good without having to do anything, it's pretty sweet. It also lets you tap in a postcode or a location, which if you want to do an A to B course and you just need to get somewhere, the 840 is going to be able to do that too, all on the device. As the 540, you're going to have to whack your phone out and do it on there and then sync it up. A little bit more hassle, but you know, another nice feature to know that this can all do it straight in the device, especially if your phone's out of battery or something like that. A nice touch. I guess the last real bonus to having a touch screen, apart from the fact that it's just nice to use generally, is the fact that when you're looking around a map, trying to work out where you're going, you know, what's coming up. It is just next level easier doing it by pinch zooming around with two fingers. And it just makes this something so quick and easy that you don't even have to think about. You know, it's like a phone and it's a lot harder to do that with buttons. It, you know, it's a fiddly long process. So that is a massive bonus as well. The 840 has 32 gig of memory and the 540 has 16. But other than that, they are basically the same. And an easy way to tell them apart is the 840 is full blackout and the 540 just has that dark grey bezel, if that's what you want to, want to call it around the outside. But yeah, very similar. Moving on to the main new feature, and it's probably what I should have started with really, is they now both come in a solar version. Now you might be used to this with the Garmin 1040 that came out a few months ago, and that is their flagship huge bike computer. And basically that technology is trickling down into these smaller units. And if you haven't heard of this technology already, it's pretty amazing stuff that Garmin are doing, giving you really extended battery life. So it's almost like those old school calculators that used to run off the sun, but you know, on steroids. They've got it in loads of their tech now, including like the watches, which this watch has as well. Bit of a common fanboy, as you can tell. And basically what it does is it gives you increased battery life in the daytime. Obviously in the daytime, it doesn't quite work in the evening yet. And you can see on the screen here, I'll do a little zoom in obviously if you can't see from there, but this area around the screen, that's kind of, it looks a little bit sort of reddish in color, a little bit, little bit shiny. Uh, that is obviously converting the sun's energy straight into battery in your device, making it last longer. The battery is now amazing on these things, so you get 26 hours worth of use without any of that solar topping up, shall we call it. And then with your normal amount of sort of British sun, which isn't a huge amount like you can see today, you're gonna get a whopping 32 hours of use before this thing runs out of battery. And then if you need even more battery than that, which I really can't imagine many of us will, but you can put it in a battery saver mode, which tunes down some of the settings and gives you 42 hours worth of battery without the solar and then a whopping 60 hours of use with solar. So that's a lot of riding. And essentially to put it in a more understandable term, in battery saver mode, if this is in the sun, it's gonna get an extra 25 minutes of extra battery life per hour by it having this solar feature. So I hope that makes sense. And another cool feature is the fact that when you're not riding, so you could be stopping for lunch, you pop it on standby, or you're taking a day off of riding in between two rides, whatever the reason is, you can leave it out in the sun and it's gonna be charging up from that sun's energy too, which is a really nice touch. Speaking about charging, it has a USB-C, so it's up to the modern standards of USB charging. Doesn't amount to a great deal, but it does have a few benefits in the fact that it's slightly more waterproof as a USB socket goes, and it charges slightly quicker as well, so a small bonus nonetheless. They both now have multi-band GNSS connectivity. That does sound quite techy. Well, I suppose it kind of is, but the reality is it connects to two satellites up in the sky when it can, as opposed to one. And what that does, it gives you far better and more accurate GPS data. So this is a prime example. I'm in a woods, 
and especially in the bit more in the summer when there's more foliage up there but a gps can struggle to get good accurate data on where you are on the trail so it's really good at giving you way better data especially in these tricky scenarios now for a few of the more performance focused updates in it as you can see i'm just out here on a chill gravel ride today but i'm going to give these a go soon so the first one's called targeted adaptive coaching and this is actually a really cool feature if you've got an event lined up that you want to train for so what you do is you'd whack that event in and the date that you're doing it and it's going to work out all the data from that event, all the hills, the climbs, the distance, everything to do with that event. And what it's gonna do, it's pretty much gonna give you all the suggested coaching for you to be as fit as you can for that event day. So it's gonna give you daily suggested workouts and that is all personalized for you and that event that you're doing. And it's clever as well. It knows if you miss a day's training, it's gonna rejig it and make you catch up or maybe not quite catch up, but you know, it's gonna, it's gonna work with you and really help you get the most out of you on that event day without you having to do much thinking at all. Coaches you better watch out. Another cool feature that kind of runs along this is it has a stamina gauge, which basically takes in all your riding data and how you've been performing recently with this sort of Garmin coaching side of things. And it basically can work out how much you've got left in the tank and it's gonna give you that as a percentage or a distance on the screen. So you know if you're going at this current pace that you're gonna potentially bonk before you make it to the end or if you've got plenty left in the tank, it's gonna tell you to push it because you've got a bit more speed left in you and you should be giving it a little bit more welly before you get to the finish line or the pub. Another cool new feature is it has a new Climb Pro feature. Don't actually know what it's called, Climb Pro 2 I'm going to call it, but it's probably not called that. But basically what this is, if you haven't pre-installed a route onto the unit, for whatever reason, you know, you might have joined a group ride and not had the course given to you, you might just be going for a little free ride wandering around, whatever the reason. These Garmin's are now clever enough and have all the data inside them to know what hill's coming up and how big it is. So you can have this automatically pop up on your screen with no route data, and it's instantly just gonna know the hill you're doing and tell you how big it is, how steep it is, how long it is, if you wanna know that. Which is really cool, because I've been for loads of rides without the hill data, and it's always annoying when the bloke next to you knows how long it is and can kind of pace himself for it, and you're sat there going, I don't have a clue how long this is. So that can't happen anymore, which is really cool. Speaking about climbing, if you're just in an area you don't know where the local hills are, there's a Climb Explore page, if you just click a couple up here, and it just finds all your local climbs, gives you a little summary of what they are, and it can take you to go and do them as well. This just does so much stuff, I can't even, I'm not even scratching the surface. But in a nutshell, that is most of the main new features in this model, it does so much more. It connects to Strava, it does Strava segments, it connects to your phone, it pops up notifications, it connects to a whole host of every single third party computer that you'd have for power meter, lights. It does so much stuff. If you're thinking about what it can't do, it probably can do it. It's even got a bike alarm on it, which, Let's be honest, it's a bit of a laugh. I'm not sure it's gonna stop many people, but that's how much stuff it's got on it. But if you've got any questions, and I'm sure you will, drop them in the comments and we'll be sure to answer them. Thanks for watching, and I'm gonna finish off my ride. Whop. <laughs>